The U.S. Department of Defense senior defense official holds a background briefing. The link to this will be in the video description below, so you, you can read the whole thing if you want. The senior defense official assesses that Russia's progress in Donbas is slow and uneven, but they're admitting that Russia is making progress. However slow and uneven, they're still incrementally making progress. And they, they make it sound like uh, Russia is having all of these setbacks, but the nature of the combat in the Donbas region right now is heavy artillery, long range fires. Uh, this is something that you do slowly, methodically and you move up incrementally they're up against heavily fortified positions that ukraine has built up over the course of eight years they were built specifically to make it difficult to break through them so it will take time to do it it's not something that you want to rush doing uh, so the bottom line is no matter how slow and uneven the progress is it is still progress and if russia is making progress what is ukraine doing ukraine is doing the opposite of progress uh, they're losing. The senior defense official uh, admits that there has been missile strikes on critical infrastructure across Ukraine, especially in the West. The senior defense official says, while we're still assessing sort of the damage, it's not clear that they've been very accurate in trying to hit critical infrastructure. And there's been no perishable impact that we've seen impeding or in any way obstructing with the Ukrainians' ability to replenish and restore themselves. And what Russia has been trying to do is disrupt travel along rail. This is how Ukraine and also how Russia is replenishing their forces. But even if we believe the U.S. Department of Defense that Ukraine's ability to replenish and reinforce their, their troops on the front line has not diminished at all despite Russia's best efforts, that means Ukraine is throwing everything that they have and everything the West has given them at Russia, and Russia is still making steady, uneven progress, but progress nonetheless. Think about that. And uh, just kind of a reality check. I, I just want to refresh people's memories. This is not Russia's first uh, significant military operation. They have been conducting military operations in Syria for the last seven years. Since 2015, Russia has been in Syria working with the Syrian Arab army on the ground to retake territory from Western-sponsored militants. And they've taken back major cities, multiple major cities, the most populous cities in Syria. They have taken all of that back. That was done with Russia's help. Some of these operations, each individual operation, could take months. Territory would change hands back and forth. Uh, but ultimately, Syrian forces, with Russia's assistance, they prevailed. And I want to show you this Reuters article right here. Uh, timeline, the battle for Aleppo. So this is uh, one of the largest cities in Syria. By 2016, a, a year into Russia's intervention, in February, the, the beginning of the year, the Syrian Arab army, with Russia's help, they cut off the, the main road to Aleppo from Turkey. That is how those forces were being armed and resupplied and reinforced. They cut that road off. That was in February. It wasn't until July 27th that the entire city was encircled by Syrian forces. Uh, Ten days later, that encirclement was broken. That, that means the militants inside the city and militants from outside the city attacked uh, the weakest point they could find in the encirclement and broke through it, enabling supplies to go in and, and additional reinforcements to go in or whoever wanted to get out, out. It wasn't until September that the city was reencircled. And in October, there was another major attempt to break out, but it, it failed. It lost momentum and it failed. And the city was fully liberated on December 13th almost a year after this this whole operation to retake Aleppo started, almost an entire year. So it took a year to take Aleppo back. I just want people to keep in mind, this is how these military operations go. And the, the West is going to act as if Russia taking its time in the Donbas region somehow indicates weakness. It doesn't. That is how Russia was fighting in Syria. And that is how they're fighting here. The point is, they're making progress. 
until they're no longer making progress or they begin retreating. Only, in, only then can you say Russia is failing because they were doing the same process in Syria and they won. They won decisively. And I want to talk a little bit more about how, how the West says the, you know, the flow of weapons and, and men and ammunition is still flowing to the front lines. Uh, you know, maybe things like the Javelin missile. But I, I want to point out something here. In the Donbas region, this is an artillery battle. Uh, this is long-range artillery fire. Ja the Javelin missile has a range of around 2, 2.5 kilometers. Russian artillery can have uh, ranges from 15 kilometers to 50 kilometers. It is creating a wall of raining steel so far out, no one with a javelin can get anywhere close to getting a shot. Uh, and that is the point. And um, I just want to, just so you know, it's not me and my Russian propaganda. This is an article from Forbes. This was written before before Russia started its military operations in Ukraine. It says, unfortunately, the historical counter to long range anti-tank missiles is more extensive use of artillery to suppress likely firing positions and Russia's ground forces famously field abundant artillery. Furthermore, in 2014 to 2015, Russian artillery demonstrated greatly improved lethality thanks to new drone surveillance and electronic warfare capabilities. Conversely, though Ukraine's counter battery capacity may have been improved by US supplied radars and electronic warfare systems, reports suggest its artillery arm remains badly undermanned and lacking munitions. This article, again, it was written before Russia began its military operations in Ukraine and what they just described, that is what we see playing out in the Donbas region right now.